In this video we're going to take a look at building an amp and voltmeter out of one of these cheap amp and voltmeter modules, a couple of connectors and then just a small piece of wire. You can do both of these things with a multimeter, any multimeter should do, but a, a voltmeter is normally fine because you can connect that parallel to a circuit, but the amp meter needs to be in series with the circuit and that always seems a bit awkward to me using the terminals of a multimeter so this you should be able to this has got a 2.1 millimeter jack on one end and a 2.1 millimeter socket on the other so this should be able to replace the power supply for anything or should be able to go in line with the power supply for anything that uses this kind of connection so that's kind of what I would use on all my higher power stuff so um, yeah it should be interesting there's two different ways you can wire this up as well. You can share the power source or you can have an independent power source to power the actual module itself. Um, the advantages of using the independent power source uh, lets you use, lets you measure the voltage between 0 and 100 volts rather than 4 and 30 volts if you share the power supply. But I don't think I need to measure stuff in that kind of range anyways so I think I'm just gonna go for the simple option and share the power supply. So this connector is going to be what my power supply for the projects are going to be plugged into so this will be the input to the circuit and we want to connect the tick black line from the volt and amp meter into the negative line of this Okay, that should be pretty good. And now we want to take the thick red line and plug it into the negative of the other connection. Okay, so that's pretty good too. And now the thin black line isn't needed when you're sharing the power source. So the red line is going to go to the input So this is going to be where it gets its positive voltage from. I'm not actually 100% sure what the yellow line is for. It is going to be connected to the positive part of the load. The module should have ground connection, you know, using this thick black wire. So I'm not 100% sure what this is for. Maybe it's for measuring like voltage drops, but these two are pretty much going to be connected to the same thing because there's just going to be a direct wire going across between the two things that uh, the two things that these are connected to. So yeah, I'm not not a hundred percent sure, but we'll do it as they say. So yeah, the red one is going to the input, yellow one to the output, and then there is also going to be one wire going from the positive terminal of both of these. So the cables were a little bit short to wrap around the red wire so we're gonna I just lengthen them up a bit so I can wrap them up and hopefully it'll make a better connection. Okay yeah, so that's them wrapped up so now it's time to connect it in. So this is our input. Okay, that's pretty good. Now time to do our output. So much for making a good connection with this. I might strip them down. Okay, so hopefully we can make a bit of a better connection with these. And that should be it. 
can test it out and give it a go now. So I'm just after finish making a video on a Kickstarter stats library. So I have this here, so it seems like the perfect thing to test. So the LED matrix is being powered by a five volt power supply coming in here. So what we can just do instead now is take the five volt power supply, plug that into our input jack. You can see that it is reading 5.1 volts, which seems pretty good. And then we can just power the module. So the ESP8266 was actually still running there because that's powered from USB at the moment. But uh, so it didn't need to restart or anything like that. But you can see here that the module is taking around 0.3 of an amp. Okay, it's settled on 0 0.28. Around that. I don't know what makes it go up and down like that. Like the colors aren't changing or anything. So maybe this isn't that accurate, but I guess it gives you a good indication or some indication anyways of how much power is needed. Now I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at how the different colors impact how much amp is drawn. So we, we obviously know that if we turn all these pixels white, it's going to draw more amps. But uh, I thought it'd be interesting to actually see the actual difference of it. So this is the web draw example that we looked at on streams a couple of times. So let's just color this in. Okay, yeah, I'm getting pretty bored of this. I'm gonna do it programmatically and uh, we'll, I'll get back to you. Okay, I should have given myself the option now of a set all. And now I just need to pass in the color, which I believe is F800 for red. That didn't work. Okay, it would help if I actually included the send message command in it. So let's reload the page. All right, that's what I'm talking about. My webcam kind of freaked out there. I don't know what's going on, but uh, anyways. So that's drawn around 1.2 amps. The display does not look multiplexed like that in person. Um, okay, so let's try blue. My webcam might be on the way out. I don't know what's up with that. But uh, you can see blue uses way less power. It's only using around 50, um, or sorry, half an amp compared to over an amp of red. So let's try green. So green is less than red, but way more than blue. And then white should be just Fs. And I guess it makes sense. It's almost an exact combination of all the other ones. You'll notice that the voltage has dropped quite a bit it's under under the original 5 volts the amps is about 2.5 ish so that's kind of interesting there is one of the lights up there blinding you that uh, is illuminating my desk so this should work between anything between 4 and 30 volts so that is a 12 volt light so we should be able to test it on that too So you can see it's using 0 0.36 amps. Uh, 
and me cranking it up as high as it goes is 0 0.8 amps. So in summary, I actually really like this. I think this could be really useful. Um, the next steps would obviously be to solder these connections up, um, use a proper DC jack. Um, for the output, I'm not sure exactly what you could do. You can get these headers with wires on them. I think you might be able to buy them as something you can solder to as well. Um, but yeah, so s definitely soldering it up would be one thing. And then also making a case for it prob probably. But it's definitely um, it's definitely very usable to uh, just check how much current something's drawing. So yeah, pretty cool. Do you have any suggestions on how you could improve this project other than the case and soldering it up? Or even if you had suggestions for the case and soldering it up, I'd be interested to hear them. So hopefully you found this video interesting and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye bye.